into it. Our first story of the night, of course, a lot going on. Uh, Monday Night Raw, they're really trying to pick things up. Uh, but uh, uh, the Roman Rumble uh, coming up here, uh, as as it kind of got lined up here, it, we, you could tell that we kind of uh, went full steam in the Royal Rumble season uh, by the by the looks of Raw last night. Uh, I, I, and and the the first time the title is defended at a Royal Rumble, uh, but not the first time that, that that somebody may have won the Royal Rumble and and, and gained the belt. As we remember, 1992, I believe that was with Ric Flair. Yes, it was. So one of the, I know that's one that I wore out the tape uh, back in the day. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is this does this bring a new new excitement to the Rumble at this point? I am vastly curious to find out how it's going to work. Mm-hmm. So so if someone else wins, he loses the title to that someone else. But if he does, what does this mean for WrestleMania? That's what my main. Well, I, well, they always say the per, the person that that wins Royal Rumble goes to WrestleMania. So whoever has the belt is going to end up in WrestleMania, ideally, right? Um, that's true. That's a good point. So, so I mean, I, I think that's that's kind of your ticket, and we don't have something weird like the Elimination Chamber uh, to mix things up. I, we usually end up getting like some kind of tag match at Fastlane. I can't believe they put Fastlane in the middle there. Am I, am I correct? Yeah. That's Fastlane they they replaced with, right? Yep. So. Um, yep. I don't know. It seems like kind of an odd choice. Um, I, I I felt like I felt like a uh, you know you know going into it. Of course, there was like all kinds of uh, shenanigans uh, uh, with the with the guest referee with the fence and everything. Did you guys feel like it was very uh, attitude era, Matt? Um, hard to say, sword. I, I don't know if Vince should have gone out there with a sleeveless referee shirt. I don't know if he should have dusted <laughs> that thing off. Certainly. I um, thought it wasn't necessarily attitude there because sometimes, well, some, not all the time, but sometimes things in the attitude there made sense. Right. I thought it was bit. It's just, it's just like sometimes it's not just, it's, just because there's a lot of shenanigans doesn't mean it's attitude there. You know, it, it just didn't make sense. So I, that's I, that's bad in any era. Whether it's attitude there or the I 80s agree with you. or now, it just didn't make the finish of this match didn't make sense at all to me. I agree with you in execution. I just, I, I just feel like the um, the guest referee. Well, just I, I guess Vince's presence in the way that it is uh, 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 evokes that kind of attitude era spot in my brain. Um, and the problem is, it's it's stretched out. Like any anything like that, any, you know, it's that three hours that really kills it. Because I forget about it until we get three hours later and finally have the match. Right, whatever the heck we set up at the top of the show. And um, I, I can't imagine how the how the, um, the the casual person. Well, I guess we know how the casual person's doing because the, the numbers aren't doing very well. I, didn't, I haven't seen the numbers for last night, of course. Um, but uh, uh, hey, at least there's another two hours on USA. So with SmackDown yeah, coming yeah, up yeah, this yeah. week, so I'm sure they're really happy about that at this point. So um, I, don't know, I mean, hey, we are running into uh, WrestleMania season here uh, with the Royal Rumble. Um, I love the idea that we're starting these factions up. Uh, you know, really kind of building up the the Wyatts and uh, the uh, the social outcasts that formed last night. Uh, so I mean, a lot of guys that were kind of lost, and uh, I, I'm kind of calling them the Job Squad 2.0, or I I don't know what we're up to by now as far as that goes. Um, I, I don't know what do you, what do you guys think kind of building up into that? I think the social outcast is probably the funniest thing I've seen in wrestling in, in, in the longest time. <laughs> I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what I should make of it. I just found it hilarious. I just thought it was just the silliest thing. I don't know why it even exists. I guess it's because they're so thin uh, with, with, with people because uh, they don't have guys like Cesaro or Randy Orton, and, uh, Daniel Bryan even, but uh, it's something. I mean, I don't, <laughs> like I, said, I don't know what to make of it yet. It's, the name is awful, but <laughs> it's just the group itself is just like, what, what is this? Like, Obviously, it's, it's, it, it reeks of Job Squad 2.0, but I don't know if they're going to be the Job Squad. Heath Slater won last night, so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what's going on. I have no idea. I was trying to figure out if they were gonna if they were trying to like shed their existing gimmicks because when they all like did their shtick on the ramp and they're all like I don't know making up new catchphrases on the on the fly and Curtis Axel is gonna break free of these chains the chains and are off, do man. their thing and they all walk off and I'm like okay are they like Done, and then like Bo Dallas has got to grab the mic one last time, and just be like, "Oh, by the way, Bo leaves." And like, I was like, I don't, 
Go, I, it's, for me, I, I like I like Slater, and I think Axel kind of fits. But like Adam Rose and Bo Dallas are very strange pieces for this group. Like, where's Sandow? Sandow would fit into this perfectly, and I'm sure I could think of one other person to do it. But I feel like like Bo Dallas and Adam Rose had too much of an existing thing going on for them to just kind of like slide into this uh, whatever this is going to be, some sort of renegade outsider uh, faction. It just feels like a weird fit. I think that's the point, though. I think it's supposed to be weird. And they, they accomplished that, you know, mm-hmm. with, in spades, just making it weird. <laughs> um, but we're also getting this weird, interesting spot where, and again, it, it feels like every time they do a move like this, it's like, well, why didn't we do this going into Survivor Series? Uh, we, we're kind of going faction crazy at this point, which I think is great because I think it gives a, 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 a little bit of structure to just, you know, uh, a bunch of people in random matches that, that we seem to have, or the same people in the same matches from week to week, uh, and adds a little bit to it. Um, I just kind of they've get... been building new Survivor Series teams every week since Survivor Series. <laughs> I know, <sorry>. I know. <laughs> They're screwing with us. Uh, I but, feel like I'm being messed with. But I think it's a it, it's a great way for them to kind of add a little bit of excitement. I mean, look at look at the crew for uh, the, the 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 League of Legends. I, I he want to call United Kingdom because that's what they were in the video game like several years ago when they put that that kind of group together uh, with Sheamus and all them. Uh, but the, but you know I'm definitely more interested in Del Rio now than that odd awkward Zeb Coulter thing that they were doing uh, uh, several months in advance. Um, I don't think Rusev really needed anything to get more exciting because he had Lana. Uh, but uh, it, 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 Sheamus again. I mean we had you know we were all just yawning at him and, and Randy Orton all summer. And how about that Wade Barrett sword? How about way. that Wade Barrett? How about getting that paid, Wade Barrett? Getting paid to do nothing, sword. Getting paid doing absolutely nothing. And yet, mysteriously, sometimes walking to the ring with them, and then nothing, and then standing around watching things happen. Just standing on the apron and watching a tag match and never tagging in, and then going home and getting paid. I didn't even realize he was what doing that. I, uh, what the, wait, what was the injury? I, I I don't I feel like I asked it the, like a like a nerve issue in his neck or something. Yeah. Like, he said it on Twitter. It's like some nerve issue in his neck or something like that. So it's kind of something nerve related. Said it's not then. serious, but it's serious enough that he's not wrestling. So I don't know. So 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 not serious enough to send him home. Uh, so he can stick around and do all the uh, WWE Network swerve spots in the back uh, and 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 make an appearance and sell some T-shirts. Uh, you're welcome, Matt Carlins. Uh, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> by the way, I got an email about the, about your, uh, Wade Barrett shirt, like today to ask what I thought about it, if I'd recommend it to a friend. <laughs> so <laughs> I wouldn't just recommend it. I'd give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. But Hey, I, good for, good for him. Um, it's kind of that King, King of the ring curse, isn't it? So. Um, which, what should they talk about? I, I think it's, I think his kingship has expired. Sword. <laughs> I think there's an expiration date on the crown. <laughs> I, has it, I guess he's still carrying it. Not good. It's, Not it's good. Worse. Having uh, carry- still, got, still got King merch. It's got like King, uh, the King T-shirt or something like yeah. that. It's like King. But what, yeah, the King of Bad that. News. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, what What do you think is more awkward? Having to carry the King, the the crown, and the robe out to the ring with you, or having to carry the Slammy out to the ring with you? Why? <laughs> I'm, I'm off on a tangent now. Why are our heroes flaunting their trophies, their Slammy Awards, with them while they're making that their entrances? A, That's not the that move. That should be a heel thing. Yeah. That should be a heel That's thing. That's Owen Hart. First yeah. chapter of being Owen Hart is carrying your Slammy Award to the ring and, with and you. having it and on the tights. <laughs> and I got Neville and the Usos taking their Slammys to the ring. I think the Usos did it last year, too, and I probably made the same complaint. I don't understand why they have to take their – show some, you know, let's be humble in victory, guys. I think I think the it you it, it turns into a heel thing when they're still doing it like three months later, right? Like <laughs> like there's that's, an expiration date on that I, too. I, I think the expi- okay. I think like this week was the expiration date. I I don't think you'll see them carrying slammies after next week because now we're okay. in full swing Royal Rumble. So that that is because we didn't really talk about Royal Rumble for the last three weeks, right? It was it was slammies. It was end of the year stuff. It was hey John Cena's coming back. Um, it was Vince McMahon's in jail, and now it's like, okay, Royal Rumble, leave your statues in the back, go check them, go go check them in at the gimmick table. Um, you know. So just to be so just to be clear, anyone who enters with a Slammy Award 
in their hand next week, that's a heel turn, right? Okay. I'll good. accept that. I'll accept that. Yeah. I okay, so. good, good. I can't wait. Neville heel turn. Awesome. Looking forward to it. <laughs> completely, completely. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just wanted to put, I want to put you on the spot now that we've uh, set these parameters for the carrying your Slammy Awards Make like it. a jerk <laughs> to the ring with you. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think that's just 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 in the phase they're in while they're kind of moving into this next thing. Um, but uh, I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, interested to see how that goes. Are, are we excited for the Rumble this year? This is usually where we're getting uh, keyed up for this. I'm excited for the Rumble every year. Sword. It's yeah. my favorite time of the year. It is my WrestleMania, mm-hmm. and I have been vastly disappointed year after year in recent <laughs> years. Uh, going all the way back to CM Punk's final match here in Pittsburgh. Oh, what a day that was. What oh. a straight up fucking bummer that was. <laughs> and got bad last year here in Philly, too. Mm-hmm. Last year has been awful. You got to say it's maybe part of the reason, part of the motivation that they're doing this thing with the world title is because they've had a couple subpar rumbles the last couple years or so. I mean, they've really kind of th- well, this easy simple thing that has been like a slam dunk every single year has been <laughs> probably a dud in a lot of people's eyes the last at least the last two years i can't remember three years ago that's probably not a good sign cena won that year yeah that one <laughs> yeah. sucked too yeah they did have rock c punk yeah well, what about um Okay, so 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 we got mad the last few years because our guy didn't win, whether it be Daniel Bryan or whoever else, or really Batista or something like that, right? Um, or Roman Reigns, or, you know? Because uh, I mean, everybody's mad because their guy isn't going to WrestleMania, right? So how worse is it if there our guy is not walking away with the freaking belt? Okay, um, and and I can't wait for a- a- Axel to. Take, make his bid for that and not get eliminated from the Rumble maybe again this year. Uh, that'll be, and then him walking around for the next year saying how he's a rightful WWE champion. That could be kind of fun. Um, yeah. But The real world's champion. They could have carry a <laughs> pixelated belt around, you know? He just gets a, re- Flair did when he he gets a replica. Up. And it's not, they'll pixelate it, but it won't even be a real belt. Like he'll grab the toy one, the Mattel toy one off yeah. of the, off of the, the merch stand or something like that. Aren't they exactly? Doing that? No, no. Never mind. I'm thinking. I'm thinking of uh, Miz and um, Miz Dow. Uh, no, not Miz Dow. Uh, the the uh, God Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods. They uh, they're arguing over a, a intercontinental replica belt on the internet. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the oh. Real, like Miz's real belt that he actually won. Mm-hmm. They're playing video games over it, and Xavier Woods has it. Like he took it home. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Actual property, he got it. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, it, this is a good point. Eamon, our, our buddy down in Texas, voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, in the chat room saying he thinks that this uh, new championship stipulation actually lessens the options of possible winners to him. There's always only two or three realistic options to win the Royal Rumble. Are every you telling me year. I'm not now, getting Heath Slater in this thing? Yourself into believing that somebody else might actually win because you really like Wade Barrett, but you know only two or three or four guys have a realistic chance of winning. What's bigger stakes? Chris Jericho could walk away with it, man. Uh, all right, Chris Jericho. All right, my, my wife my wife just <laughs> muttered Dean Ambrose under her breath. Do you honestly think Dean Ambrose, one of their most popular superstars, one of the most charismatic and popular superstars in WWE. Do you think there's a chance in hell he walks out of Royal Rumble with the title? No, but nope. they would be very well served to do exactly that. This should be the year where whoever wins comes out of complete fucking left field, somebody you wouldn't expect and would not be one of those logical choices to win. This is the year they have to do it because they played it safe the past few years and it burned them. Yeah, so we exactly. Know that's not going to happen. They're going to stick with Reigns. So he's probably going to retain, but you know they're, they're trying to add entry to that by adding this you know, stipulation or, of, of sorts to it. That's to me, it opens up it does open up a lot of possibilities. I don't think it limits it. I think there's a clear cut favorite, and that's Reigns. But I think the possibilities are all there that they could have Rock win it, or Triple H win it, or maybe The Rock win it, or you know something like that, or somebody we don't don't even know. Maybe maybe AJ Styles, who I highly doubt, but you know, things like that could happen. I think they, they could go in a bunch of different directions because I don't think there's really one clear direction 
for WrestleMania even. Mm-hmm. And usually this is where you begin to see the direction they're going in. There is no clear direction for WrestleMania, so why would there be a clear direction for the Royal Rumble? The big fantasy book Hill Garza is uh, telling us in the chat room is that it's because the actual challenger for WrestleMania can't be there. Hint, hint, Rock versus Reigns. Could be. Could be. Maybe. Maybe. I'll, I'll be happy with it makes Brock you wonder Brock. how they're going to... I'll be happy with Reigns versus Brock again, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I'd be sure. perfectly happy with that. There's a lot of good, uh, interesting combinations to do with Reigns in a title match. I mean, Reigns and Brock would be awesome. We know it can be awesome because we've seen it. Reigns and Cena would be interesting. It could be a mess, fan reaction-wise, but I think it could be awesome. Um, Reigns versus Rock would probably be good. Um, there's a lot of places to go. Well, we'll see. I don't know. I, it, do, do you think the fans will be okay with Reigns? Beating, you know, hypothetically beating twenty nine other guys in one match to retain his No, <laughs> I think no. I mean, what happens if he rolls in? What happens if he rolls in at number twenty seven or twenty eight? That's kind of cheap. That's really. He's just gonna Hulk Hogan this number thing. Number one. Like, one, I think they'll put him number one. For two, I think in Orlando it's different from Philly and Pittsburgh, where we're a little more of a more of a hardcore audience. And I think people have come around more to Reigns because I think they've done everything they possibly could to get people to not boo him. At the very least. And I think that's why it won't quite go that way. Sure, there's always going to be, his, he's always going to have his detractors, but I don't think, I think they're going to put the pe- right pieces in place for people to get behind him. Mm-hmm. Whether that's genuinely behind him or they, like I said, put the right pieces in place, I just think that's what they're going to do. And I think one of those is Reigns is really good when he just put in a spot to be a badass and just punch people out. Um, just, he, he, you know, even through, he's not going to be doing a full on wrestling match and have to uh, tell a, a large story or anything like that. He just needs to pop in there, punch some people in the faces and, and, and look, you know, you know, pull, pull a cane and let me a buttload of people. And, uh, and, and it's a, it's a perfect spot for him to look amazing in that thing and get people excited. Right. Um, but you got to be careful because um, I, I, I don't know if you want to start him at number one. That'd be interesting. Um, but you don't want to do what they did in the last Rumble where Reigns kind of coasted a little bit in that in the 2015 Rumble in Philly. Uh, he didn't really eliminate a lot of guys. in do a whole lot. Now, 2014 in Pittsburgh, uh, when he broke Kane's record, by the end of that match, the fans were ready for Reigns to, to win the Rumble, yeah, Rumble in 2014. Um because he was kicking ass, right? Man, um, that... In 2015, he was kind of in coast mode, and he didn't eliminate a lot of guys, and fans were kind of like, ah, come on, you know, you got to earn it. It, it was it was the, the the best second option behind the Daniel Bryan that everybody was feverish for that year. So I know There's not that. these two guys. We'll take this Roman. We'll take Roman. We'll take Roman. Like, yeah, yeah, no, he's a shield guy. We'll, we'll, we'll take Roman. Yeah, All right. We'll take him. We'll take him. Please not Batista. Yeah, <laughs> that was basically not the movie guy that just showed up. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. All right. Well, we'll talk about some other potential names. I know the chat room down there in the corner has been talking about a few of them as potential people that could pop up at the Royal Rumble. But in the meantime, I want to give a shout out to our friends here in Pittsburgh, right down the road here from the studio, uh, here in the Beachview area and down in Carnegie, PA. Uh, Slice on Broadway, um, a good friends uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, right down here. Uh, hey, guess what? If you want to go to the Carnegie location, the exit is open. You can finally get down there uh, from the highway without some crazy detours, and I definitely recommend it. There's some shots of that place there. And uh, uh, good people, great food. Uh, New Yorker approved by Mad Mike up there. Oh, the guy lived in the Bronx. He knows good pizza, and uh, he definitely gives a thumbs up.